Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Welcome back to Morrow's Math Corner. Today we're going to learn how to simplify radical expressions and solve radical expressions using properties of radicals. So let's get right to it. Number one, the product property of radicals. In order to multiply radical expressions, they must have the same index. It's literally that simple. Mathematically or algebraically speaking, if the nth root of a and the nth root of b are real numbers and n, which is the index, is greater than or equal to 2 and an integer, then the following properties are valid. The nth root of a times the nth root of b is the nth root of ab. When the indexes are the same, you can multiply the radicands. Number two, if I have the nth root root raised to the m power, then that's just as the same as saying the nth root of a to the m power. How does that work? Well, let's go ahead and break it down. The nth root of a is a to the 1 over n power raised to the m over 1 power. That equals a to the m over n because when you raise a power to a power, you distribute the exponents, you multiply, and a to the mn is equal to the nth root of a to the m power. And that's the background to that law. And then we have, let me shrink this over here. Okay, then we have, if we have the nth root of the mth root of a, then is the m times nth root of a. That's a tongue twister. For example, if I have the third root of the square root of a, that's the sixth root of a. When I have the same singular radicand raised to multiple indexes of radicals, I can go ahead and multiply the indexes and keep the same radicand. So let's get to it. Let's simplify each of the following radicals. We can assume that all variables represent non-negative real numbers, so that means we don't have to worry about uh, absolute values when we take out an odd exponent out of an even index. So the cube root of negative 4 times the cube root of 2 is the cube root of negative 8, which equals negative 2. It's good to know your cubes. The square root of 35 times the square root of 15 is going to give you the square root of 45, which breaks down into 5 times 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 5. Let's go. The cube root of 6 times the cube root of 2. Uh, there's nothing else I can do there. Why? My radicands are different. So, even if I convert them to rational exponents, I can't do anything. And my indexes are different, so I cannot multiply the radicands. Next, I got the fourth root of 7 times the fifth root of 7. You may think, oh, you can't do that either, Mr. Morrow. However, please note that the radicands are the same. So in this particular case, I can convert 7 to the 1 fourth times 7 to the 1 fifth. And what happens when you multiply the same base? You add the exponents. So 7 to the 1 fourth plus 1 fifth. Common denominator goes to 20. That goes to 5. That's 20. That goes to 4. So I've got 7 to the 9 twentieths. All right? Now, please, don't confuse that with the following. If I have the fifth root of the fourth root of 7, in this case, that would equal the 20th root of 7. Why, Moro? What's the difference? In this particular example, I had one singular 7, one singular radicand raised to two different indexes. In this particular case, I had two separate radicals. So I had to go ahead and separate them separately and multiply and add the exponents. All right. Next, let me get this over here out of the way. All right, next, I've got the fourth root of 27 times the fourth root of 6. Do not multiply the 27 and 6th, in my opinion, 
because you're going to be going forward to have to go backwards regardless. Do multiply the variables. That's y to the fifth, w to the eleventh. Now let's break down all of these numbers that we have here into their prime factors. And then we can start taking out sets of four because I have a fourth root here. So a three, a three, a three, and a three, four threes comes out as a three. And I have a fourth root of two left over. Then four goes into my five y's one time. I take out one set of four out and I have one y left over. Then four goes into 11 w's twice and I have three w's left over. Remember, the remainders of the variable exponents remain inside of the radical. And last but not least, square root of x minus five times square root of x plus five, we're gonna go ahead and multiply the radicands because they have the same index. So this is the square root of x minus five times x plus five. You could go the long way or you could remember difference of squares. First term squared, x squared, minus second term squared, 25, and you're done. Please note, that does not equal, no, it does not equal x minus five, no. This is a binomial, and that is not a perfect square binomial, so you cannot factor that out. You cannot take any square root out of those, okay? If it was the square root of 25x squared, that's a monomial. Then that would equal 5x. Please make a note of that. This is very different than this here in green. All right, let's keep going. Division property, exactly the same as a product property. In order to divide radical expressions, they must have once again, the same index. So the nth root of A, and you have the nth root of B, if those are real numbers, and B is not equal to zero, and it is an integer, then the nth root of A divided by the nth root of B is the nth root of A divided by B. In other words, if you have the same index, you can divide the radicands. So here I have the square root of 18 over the square root of, uh, of 18x to the fifth divided by the square root of 2x cubed. So I've got 18x to the fifth divided by 2x cubed. I can go ahead and combine them. And that's going to give me the square root of 9x squared, which will equal 3x. Okay. I don't need absolute values here because I'm assuming that all the variables represent non-negative real numbers. Okay, let's check this one out. Cube root of six, that's not gonna change much. However, the cube root of z cubed, that comes out as a z, and the cube root of 125, that comes out as a five, and there you have it, it's that simple. It's really good knowing your perfect cubes. Okay, when I have something complicated like this, I'm gonna definitely go ahead and create one Sorry about that. One radical, it's gonna make life easier for me. Why can I do that? Because I have the same index, so therefore I can divide the radicands. Now remember what I told you a while ago, whenever I have an odd index with a negative inside the radicand, I'm gonna take that negative out immediately. And then I'm gonna start simplifying. 375 divided by three is 125. X to the second divided by X to the negative one is X to the two minus a negative one. So that's X to the third. And then Y to the first divided by Y to the seventh is Y to the negative sixth, which is Y to the sixth in the denominator. So now I'm going to have a negative five because the cube root of 125 is five. The cube root of X cubed is X and the cube root of y to the sixth is y squared. How come modal? Three goes into three one time, hence the x. Three goes into six two times, hence the y. All right. All right, let's not stress this. Let's just use this logically. 
I've got two cube roots here, so I can multiply the radicands. So I've got 12 x to the 10th y to the 5th divided by the cube root of 96 x to the 3rd y squared. I can create one giant cube root here of 12 x to the 10th y to the 5th over 96 x cubed y squared. And now I'm going to start simplifying. 12 goes to the 96 eight times, so that becomes 1 eighth. x to the 10th divided by x to the 3rd is x to the 7th. And y to the 5th divided by y squared is y to the 3rd. The cube root of 1 eighth is 1 half. 3 goes into 7 two times with a cube root of 1x left over, and 3 goes into 3y's one time, and there's no leftovers. So I've got x squared y times the cube root of x over 2. And there you have it. It's that easy. It may look complicated, but if you take your time and you know your rules, it's pretty simple. Radical equations and their applications. Radical equation is an equation that has a variable in a radicand or a variable with a rational exponent. This lesson lets assume that all radicals and expressions with rational expo exponents represent real numbers. What is the procedure? Number one, let's isolate the radical or the rational exponent. Let's get it by itself. Number two, let's cancel out or eliminate the radical by raising both sides of the equation to the same power of the index. Why do I do that? Because the nth root of x raised to the nth power will equal x. We learned that at the beginning of this chapter. Just a little friendly reminder. Okay? If you want to get rid of a, if you want to eliminate a radical, raise it to the power of the index. And then number three, always remember to check for what's called extraneous solutions. And extraneous solutions are solutions that don't satisfy the original equation. In other words, they don't work. For example, if I were to solve square root of x equals negative four, I'm going to cancel out my square root by squaring both sides, and that means that x would equal 16. But when I check that, the square root of 16 does not equal negative 4. The positive root of 16 is 4, which does not equal negative 4, making this an extraneous solution. So an extraneous solution happens when the solution does not work. All right, let's check some out. I'm going to isolate the, the radical, so I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Then I'm going to go ahead and cancel out the square root by squaring both sides. The radicals cancel out with the exponent, giving me 4x plus 1 equals 25. And now we're just going to solve this two-step equation, as you can see here, and x equals 6. Let's check that. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 is 25, square root of 25 is 5, 5 minus 5 is 0. That works. Excellent. All right, next. Let's go ahead and cramp that over there. I got over here negative 4 to both sides because I want to isolate that radical, that cube root in this case. Since it's a cube root, please note that you can have it equal to a negative value. I'm going to go ahead and cube both sides. The cube root cancels with the power of 3. 3x three plus, I'm sorry, I thought that was a plus. That was my sloppy handwriting. Be neat. 3x minus 12 equals negative 27. Then I added 12 to both sides. 3x equals negative 15, divide by 3, x equals negative 5, let's check it. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, minus 12 is negative 27, 
Cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Check. Okay, this is an example with a rational exponent. Okay? And you get rid of a rational exponent just as easy as you would get rid of a radical. But instead of raising it to the power of the index, this time you're simply going to raise it to the power of the reciprocal of the rational exponent. So in this particular case here, we're going to literally raise it to the 3 over 1 power. So 3 times 1 third is 1, so I've got 2x minus 3, bye bye rational exponent. 3 to the third power is 27, and now let's go ahead and solve. Divide by 2, simple equation, x equals 15. Let's check it. 15 times 2 is 30, minus 3 is 27. 27 to the 1 third is the cube root of 27, which is 3. 3 minus 7 is negative 4, it works. All right, next, I'm going to subtract 7 to both sides. And I have the square root of 5x plus 1 equals negative 2. And I can stop right there because this is no solution. Why, Moto? I can never have an even index equal a negative answer. It just doesn't happen. Okay, so be very cognizant of that. It's an older rule that's going to be applied a lot. When I have radicals on both sides, don't be afraid of that. We're going to get rid of the radicals by literally doing the same thing as we have before. We're going to raise both sides to the power of the index. So those two cancel out. I've got 4x minus 2 equals those two cancel out. I got 3x plus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3x to both sides. Then I've got x minus 2 equals 2, add that 2, and x equals 4. Let's check it. 4 times 4 is 16 minus 2, that's the cube root of 14. 3 times two, 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14, so that's the cube root of 14. So they are equal, it works. Okay, here I have two square roots, one is by itself, and one is a binomial. Remember, you always want at least one radical by itself. So we've got that over here. We've got that accomplished. So what do we do? We're going to square both sides. So when I square this square root, that drops to x minus 12. Now, please remember, this does not equal 4 minus x. You do not distribute that 2 as an exponent. If you had this, yes, then this would become 2 times x to the 1 half. Then that would become 2 squared times x, and that would become 4x. Because there we're dealing with a monomial. Okay, please make, make a conscious effort to recognize that. In our situation here, we're dealing with a binomial. So if you remember, this means that it's 2 minus square root of x times 2 minus square root of x. That's a perfect square binomial. And I'm not going to do it the long way, but I will remind you of the awesome formula. First term squared, so 2 squared, minus 2 times the first term times the second term, which is square root of x, plus the second term, which is the square root of x, squared. A lot easier that way. So this is going to be x minus 12 equals 4 minus 4 square root of x plus x because the square root and the power of 2 cancel. I'm going to subtract 4 and x to both sides because I want to get my radical alone. The x is cancel. I've got negative 16 equals negative 4 square root of x. Divide by negative 4. 4 equals the square root of x. I square both sides. And x equals 16. Boom. Now, let's see if it works. I'm going to erase this stuff. I don't want to 
confuse my viewers. Okay, so let's see if it works. Square root of 16 minus 12 is the square root of 4, which is 2. Okay, does that equal 2 minus the square root of 16? Well, that's 2 minus 4, so no. 2 does not equal negative 2. My friends, that's an extraneous solution. So we have learned how to simplify and solve radicals using properties of radicals. Hope you learned a lot. Thank you. Come back anytime now. Take care now. Bye-bye.